Antelope Park, more than 80 lions learn to hunt and live as close-knit prides under the guidance of David Yulden and teams of experienced lion handlers. Some of the project's older lions have just been released into a semi-wild enclosure where it's hoped they'll breed. But the youngest lions in the park have also reached a crucial stage in their journey through the release program. Over the last month, these cubs have been fed milk and mincemeat. Now they're ready for a change of diet. So, you can have that bit. Here we go. You can have that bit there. We've got Chundu, we've got Chisa, and we've got Chobi. Chobi is the female in the group. And this is the first time they're getting actual chunks of meat. Lion cubs instantly recognize me. You don't have to teach them. But, I mean, the first time they see it, it takes them, a, you know, a couple of sniffs, then they give it a lick, and then that's it, they're off. If we just look at Chisa, he's moved the meat round to the side of his mouth, because at the sides, they've got what are called carnassals, which are very jagged, pointed uh, teeth, and that they use to just kind of slice off the chunks that they need. Now, we can see also Chisa is using his dew claws, much like thumbs, He's digging into the meat to hold it in place so that he can then try and tear meat away. Looks like Chundu's got at least one claw in, but Chobi hasn't quite understood this yet. And it's, it's not something you can teach them. Some immediately do it, and others actually take quite a long time. The only way you can try and encourage them is to possibly, there we go, try and take the meat away, and hopefully she will then automatically put her claws in, in order to try and keep hold of it. Usually they get this all by themselves, but some will take a lot longer than the others. Chundu here at the moment, he's just constantly chewing and chewing and chewing. And by moving them onto me, it's really helping just build up the jaw muscles. But also, now they're getting meat, we'll see these cubs grow very, very quickly from here. Gradually, meat will replace milk in their diet. And these three are, are growing and developing exactly as we'd expect. You can see just on their fur, the baby fur is almost gone now. They're looking a little scruffy. And probably over the next month, their more adult fur will start to come through. They'll flush a nice orange colour, and turn into proper little lions. The cubs are at a turning point in their lives. They'll soon be exposed to prey animals and begin the first steps towards learning to hunt and their chance of freedom. It takes at least three years of rigorous training before lions can be considered for release. And with more than 100 lions split between the program sites in Zimbabwe and Zambia, an enormous amount of time and money is invested in every one of the lions. At the forefront of the release program are red-blooded male Milo and seven female lions making up the Ngamo pride. Set free in a semi-wild enclosure where it's hoped they'll breed, these lions are now the subject of intensive observation. As the sun sets, David is taking one last look at the pride before he leaves for the Zambia release site. He's handing over to researcher Jackie Kirk, who'll study the life of this pioneering pride. The whole purpose of the research that we're doing really is, is for one thing, and that is to be able to compare the behavior of these lions in a release site to a wild pride. Are they acting in the way that we would expect them to? If they are, then when their cubs are born here, they will be raised in a natural way. And we can therefore be sure that they really have as good a chance as any lion when they're put into the wild. And everything so far is showing us that, yes, these lions are behaving naturally. Their, their kill rates are normal, the social interactions are normal, but it's going to be a long process many, many months of data collection uh, before we have a really complete picture. We can make a full analysis.
To collect as much information as possible, the pride will be tracked day and night. The sun really is just uh, disappearing over the horizon. Um, it's getting cooler and they're starting to, to wake up and get on with whatever their evening activity is going to be. Could be hunting, they might just sleep all night. I don't know, but that's the exciting thing, is we don't know how they're spending their time yet. And part of the data is to try and understand at any given part of a day or night, what are these lions doing? How are they spending their time? As dusk falls, the females get more active. Since the lions have moved away from Waterhole 1, there are now some zebra coming into that area, and Kuali and Fire have turned around and headed straight back through the long grass. It's difficult to see at the moment. Fire is about 10 metres into the long grass, kind of on the left-hand side. I think Kuali is slightly ahead of her, but the, the grass is just above their head height. So every so often, all you can see is just a slight dark shape moving. At some point, one of the two is going to start chasing and the zebra will run. Having already made several kills, Kuali is the pride's most successful hunter. But David's never actually witnessed her make a kill. This would be a first. There we go. Yeah, you can see, I think that's Kuali who's chasing through. I think she's a little far behind them, but that's not bad. Fire hasn't joined in. So at this point, I have no idea whether uh, they're successful, but we have seen Kuali being really forthcoming when it comes to hunting. So now we just have to see whether she's coming back empty-handed or not. Sadly, Kuali's missed her chance to impress David. Clearly she was unsuccessful, but you know, she's heading back to the Pride and they're quite active. I reckon at some point tonight they might make a kill. Apart from hunting, there's another important behaviour for David to monitor. All of the females at the moment are going to meet up with Milo. Most of the time in a pride, the male actually is away from the females, and then the females will come back uh, and meet up with him, uh, or he'll go off at like days at a time just to patrol his territory. So it's completely normal. They split, come back together. Now, the pride have found Milo. There's been a bit of greeting, a bit of just like staring at him. And actually, the girls have carried on walking. Eight-year-old Milo has been in the release site a few days. He's been well received by the females. But like males in the wild, he's spending most of his time alone. The sound of a lion roaring is absolutely incredible. Now, it's actually audible eight kilometres, about five miles away. And that's an extraordinary distance to be able to throw your voice. When you're out as it's dark now and you hear that sound, that is the most magical sound in Africa. I've seen him scent Mark and now we're hearing him roar, which makes me believe that he's starting to really take ownership um, of this area. With Milo and the females exhibiting natural behaviour, the hard work of the release programme is starting to pay off. At Antelope Park's release site in central Zimbabwe, male Milo and the seven females of the Ngamo pride have settled well. But having monitored them all day, late in the evening, David Yulden spots a problem with one of the females. Athena's walked past us and, and she's got really a very bad limp at the moment. It's probably an injury in the wrist, and it's most likely that she's, during a hunt, she's probably slipped down a hole or something and, and just sprained it. Set free to survive without human help, Athena must now rely on the Pride to feed and care for her. But the Pride are moving on fast. However hard it might be, we will not intervene. And it, it's a harsh reality, but if we're going to give these animals the opportunity to live a wild life, then they're going to have to take the ups and, and the knocks, the downs. She's clearly wanting to keep up with the rest of the pride, um, and they will just leave her behind. Injured and alone, 
Athena won't be able to hunt. If she can't feed herself, she won't survive. <coughs> Athena calls out to her pride. As I'm leaving it at the moment, five of the girls are together, and Athena, just because of her injured leg, is somewhere just behind. I, she, I can hear her calling, but I can see one of the females looks as if she's actually going to go back for her. To David's surprise, the pride starts to return. Oh, there's another female coming as well. Oh, that makes me feel better. I thought Athena was going to spend the night on her own. They're all coming. That social bond really is very strong amongst the pride, and that's a really good sign for this release site and in terms of its success. One of our key factors was to have a, a socially stable pride. And part of that is, of course, they are looking out for each other. It's a great relief, as David must now leave this Zimbabwean pride to continue his work with the Lions at the program's other site in Zambia. It's so difficult to think that tomorrow morning I don't get to, get to wake up and spend time with them. Um, but I will definitely be back to Antelope Park uh, to catch up with them very, very soon, because, yeah, this is tough. This is really tough. The Pride will be monitored daily, and David will return to witness the next key event in the lives of this groundbreaking group. Next day, and David leaves Antelope Park after three successful months. Heading north from Zimbabwe, his destination is the Lion Conservation Project's other site in the Moziotanya National Park in Zambia. Last time David was here, several captive-born lions were brought in from South Africa to become part of the release program. Hello. Male Rwanda and his sisters Rafiji and Ruma were just 10 months old when they arrived in Zambia. Come on. But they were shy and withdrawn. It was a big problem that needed to be resolved. These are not playing in, in the way and to the amount that we expect from, from any of our lions. Five months later, and the youngsters have made an important breakthrough. Daily bush walks with dedicated lion handlers has taught them confidence and a sense of fun. Here he comes. But they're yet to make a successful kill, and David wants to see progress. These three lions are extremely easy to tell apart. Rwanda is obviously the male in the group, and then you've got the two girls. Ruma, on the right-hand side with a full-length tail, and Rafiji, who now has a very short tail. When Rafiji arrived with us, she had a very distinct curl at the end of her tail. And just over time, the, the bone started to press through the skin and actually created an infection. So but we had to remove her tail, really, quite possibly, to save her life later on. Lions use their tails to communicate. There's a, there's a black tuft on the end, which they can wave around and and let the others kind of know where they are. So she's going to be a little hampered, but the operation went extremely well. She seems quite happy in herself, um, and I'm sure she'll be able to adapt to life without that little end bit. Removing the end of Rafiji's tail was a last resort for the lion team, but with her life threatened, it was the vet's only option. Now, 15 months old, this group is the perfect age to start hunting successfully. The wind direction that we've got is that it's actually coming this way. So the lions are moving really into the wind. I can only assume that there's some kind of scent being carried on the wind from this direction. They're picking it up and they're just showing interest because both Rwanda and Ruma uh, seem really quite intent on something that is that way. Those are the two hunters in this group at the moment. Rafiji is very much the playful of the three but it's definitely Rwanda and Ruma. If there's something out there, it's them that's going to find it. Come on. 
Moments later, rumor spots movement in the thick bush. Ahead of us, a troop of baboon is coming through the area. And as you can see, all the lions have heard the sound and are now stalking to their location, which is only about 50 meters ahead. Now, they probably won't be able to get one of the adults, but they might get one of the youngsters. Baboons are clever, alert, and extremely difficult to catch. That's Ruma. Nice stalk. Um, and she's got a bit of cover between her and the baboon, which is good. I can't see the other two at the moment, but as far as I know, they're heading up on the right-hand side, and the troop is spread through here. Actually, yeah, there's Rwanda. Nice, again, nice stalking mode. And Rafiji is sitting down. started that chase. Um, I think probably her nearest baboon was about 30 meters, which is the right distance for lions to have a reasonable chance of, of catching something. I was just baboon and lions running everywhere. So our next step is to try and relocate any of the lions and see if they were successful. It's a bad sign. What? One lion soon returns. OK, this is Rafiji coming back. How did you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Did you get close? <laughs> Rafiji is not the best hunter. She's, she's just quite a thick set, large lion, um, and therefore necessarily a little bit slower. She's more of a loving kind of a lion than a hunter. But there's quite a lot of vocalization now, and that's quite often, once they've had a hunt, particularly if it's unsuccessful, um, they'll come back to the main pride, you know, just re-establish the bonds. I think I can see rumor. Go and see them. Good girl, yes. I don't know, she's telling us about which way she went. I went left. Rwanda went right. Who knows? And the final lion to return is Brother Rwanda. Empty handed. It's a promising hunt from the young lions, but they may have to choose some easier prey before they'll make their first successful kill. When these cubs first arrived, they were not playful, they were not confident. And the development from then to now is absolutely huge. And that is because every single day they're out here in their natural environment and learning about it. Um, from today, I think we can see that Rafiji is not a hunter. She's unlikely to, to add too much to the hunting ability for a while. But Ruma and Rwanda, They've clearly got some, some technique to work on, but yeah, it's, it's amazing to see how they've developed in the program, and that will continue. Next day at the lion enclosures, David's checking on a Pride member about whom he's received regular updates. Two and a half year old Keela has been moved from her Pride to a separate enclosure. And this morning, David's greeted by an incredible sight. Something unbelievably special has happened because this morning, Keela has given birth. I thought I was just coming up here this morning to, you know, just see how, how the Pride are doing. I had no idea I was going to be the first human to, to see and meet this cub. Um, it's really quite a special moment. The lone cub is completely helpless. It's only one cub, 
and it can't be more than a few hours old at this point. From what I can see, this little cub looks pretty strong. He's already moving around. I think, I think it might be a male. Difficult to tell from this distance. Very, very spotty, uh, which is normal for, for cubs. It's part of it, like, you know, hides them from predators. Um, but this is the first lion born to the program here in Zambia. And uh, he or she is simply stunning. Although this is her first cub, David hopes Keela will prove to be a good mother. Occasionally, a female will abandon her cub, uh, but the vast majority all take to it immediately with no problem at all. Um, so obviously we'll keep an eye over the next couple of days and just make sure that she is feeding it, she is responding to it when it's calling. Um, she's now sitting next to it. Uh, haven't seen her feed it yet, but I mean, for all I know, she did that 20 minutes ago. It's very exciting. We'll have to start thinking of names and... And, yeah, she looks like a radiant mother, eh? The tiny cub won't open its eyes for the first week of its life. But if it survives this crucial time, there's hope that it will be another successful addition to the programme's important Zambian prides.